we very well know the uh, overall engine architecture with its own uh, service stratum uh, on top of the transport stratum. The services um, by uh, mainly managed by the service control function in the service stratum uh, are mainly linked to the uh, way in which these services can be provisioned. But there are some interesting dimensions to the service uh, delivery and service provisioning uh, which need to be incorporated in our understanding for NGNs. So uh, we'll start with the uh, concept of the open service environment. Uh, we'd look at its requirements in, in specific and we'll see some sample uh, protocols. So what is open service environment? Uh, open service environment, as the name suggests, is, uh, is an open interface for creating and uh, registering and invoking and providing and uh, terminating services. And once the service is no more needed, uh, removing a service. So these services are uh, basically going to be provisioned through the uh, transport and service stratum, of course. Uh, but each service requires uh, uh, AAA uh, admission and resource control, quality of service provisioning, etc. Now, whatever each service requires, the functionality it needs comes from the, uh, the service stratum. Let's look at uh, the overall service architecture in NGNs from the open service environment perspective. Here, you can see that we have uh, the transport stratum. Below, we have the service stratum. Within the service stratum, we have uh, the open service environment that contains some functional entities. These functional entities may be used all at once. Maybe some of these are used. Then we have the application support functions and the service support functions, uh, which is shown to you as the outside block. It means that uh, the open service environment is a sub part of the ASF and SSF within the service stratum. So you can see here that we have the application on the top. This application is connected to the service stratum using the application to network interface. Then uh, we have the service stratum that is connecting to the functions from other service providers through the service to network interface. Other interfaces are not exactly in our scope for now, but we'll talk about them on need to do basis. So you can see here, let's name a few. We have the service composition, service description, service management, service discovery, service registration, etc. Now the policy enforcement and the joint or interworking with other service creation environments are uh, the additional responsibilities which are scope of the open service environment. We can actually go from, from the service uh, composition or service creation on one end, followed by the service description and then service registration by the service provider. Then the service discovery can be actually used by the service solicitor or someone who wants to use service. Uh, the service management uh, along with the policy enforcement and the interworking with other uh, service creation environments. We can actually look at the end-to-end -end execution. However, for brevity, we are going to just consider some instances. So the overall service provisioning architecture for NGNs uh, necessitates certain requirements to, to be met from the open service environment. And all the functional entities we've seen in OSC are um, all poised to meet these requirements. So uh, there are a total of uh, six requirements. Let's start with the first one. That is to provide a standard application programming interface to develop and install applications in a quick and seamless manner. So the focus here is on, uh, on convenience. That is, uh, uh, without much botheration, it should be instantaneously done. So that's the first requirement. It means the standard API means uh, whomsoever uh, as a third party wants to provide certain services to, uh, uh, to end users through the NGN uh, should be facilitated through some kind of standard uh, uh, in interface. Then 
the next requirement is uh, whatever uh, services have to be provided some kind of uh, uh, interoperability should be supported because uh, the networks which are connecting to the ngn are going to be different in their intrinsic or internal design uh, different operating systems like windows uh, mac um, linux etc are going to be used um, uh, different hosting platforms for service uh, delivery and the service execution could be used uh, different programming languages could be used and then uh, different uh, web uh, based services could be offered each coming uh, on certain uh, uh, web description uh, framework so it means that uh, the interoperability is a very important requirement for the osc to meet then the service development service creation should be uh, uh, made independent of the uh, manufacturers of the network and the user equipment um, because uh, whatever services are to be uh, created have to run on a variety of uh, networks which could get uh, upgrade the technology could altogether change the user equipment could be a handheld device uh, it could be a laptop or uh, it could be uh, 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 fidget for that matter in that case it is important to look at the service development uh, in, in the absence of any dependence on the underlying infrastructure uh, then uh, the uh, service creation uh, process has to be uh, transparent or aloof to uh, the location which could be a geographical location which could be an uh, ip address based location um, uh, it should be independent and it should uh, stay consistent across different geographies different ip addressing and different other addressing schemes uh, the uh, networks to uh, which are going to offer these services have to uh, uh, be uh, transparent the protocol transparency and the technology uh, of, uh, and the uh, terminal should be uh, transparent as well it means that the service has to be offered in a very seamless and transparent manner and this can only be done when a standard um, api is provided uh, which hides the uh, uh, network complexity from the uh, eyes of uh, osc uh, then whatever services are to be offered service management capabilities have to be uh, met uh, that is uh, service has to be made a uh, discoverable service has to be um, defined or described through service description uh, then the live monitoring of service like service tracking has to be ensured some kind of updation version control have to be implemented and uh, authorization to use a certain service or uh, refusing has to be incorporated as well uh, then uh, the uh, services which have to be um, uh, provided uh, there should be a provision to actually uh, create services as well as applications uh, service is more uh, um, atomic or uh, uh, singular in nature whereas an application can uh, bundle multiple services and uh, it can provide a single graphical user interface so it means that the osc has to now incorporate the um, uh, uh, service creation and provisioning not only for services but also applications uh, then these services and applications have to be uh, provided to the user in terms of deploying it on the uh, customer premises equipment uh, or the handheld device uh, then some kind of uh, um, uh, trial testing user experience has to be offered then uh, uh, then uh, once a user has used it then it, it has to be removed from the uh, user repository so it means that this the process has to be carried out uh, end to end uh, let's look at some protocols uh, this is uh, uh, just uh, a very brief uh, uh, view on the kind of uh, protocols which can be used in the ngn architecture uh, within the scope of the uh, open service environment uh, uh, 
there is a protocol known as the UDDI, that is Universal Description, Discovery and Integration Protocol. Uh, this is actually used to allow a certain service to be registered uh, with the um, OSC environment uh, for service provisioning through the uh, service and transport strata. Uh, then we have the WSDL. Uh, WSDL is basically a description language uh, that describes uh, like uh, XML schema, the attributes, the features, uh, the limitations uh, and other uh, details for the end user to make a choice. Then uh, whenever a service is to be offered, then the service is to be managed effectively. So there is something known as the uh, web service distribution management uh, framework and protocols. Now these wisdom uh, protocols and uh, services allow the uh, end user to subscribe to these web services through the incorporation of uh, um, hyperlink or a, a URL or a URI. So it means that uh, a UDDI, WSDL, Wisdom are just some of the protocols which can be used. Uh, it's not the end. There are other protocols and suites as well.